Listen, it takes two to tangle, baby. So, baby. Okay, so what? You got eight babies, oh. all them ladies. Oh, well, you're not so it far. takes 50 50, okay? So, baby, but the other, the other is he not, he not, he not give until the. Why, why, why don't 80 million Pinois support their kids here? Huh? You want to focus on one foreign guy that don't don't support his kids? Just, why don't you why don't you put 80 million Filipino just, males on Rafi Tulfo and ask them why they don't they don't pay for their babies? All right. Okay. Well, well, whatever. Everybody just wants money out of the foreign guy. Okay. Welcome to the Philippines. No, oh, hey folks. <laughs> Just been watching this Rafi Tulfo episode today. Some American dude allegedly uh, made eight babies and ran away. I I don't know. Rafi Tulfo is pretty damn funny if you watch a couple of the episodes and it's enough in English where you understand what's going on. I know nothing about that, but I'm just arguing with her. Like, why is it a big deal when a foreign guy does it? But should I say it's the culture? You want to know why all those girls are on walking street working at a bar? It's not because of us foreigners. It's because a local guy got her pregnant once or twice, made a baby, ran away. Now they got no money. Now they're working in the bar. There you go. That's real life. Unless you want to hear the Condé Nast. Top 10 places to retire. Number one, Chiang Mai. Number two, Boracay. Let's <laughs> try to talk real life here. Anyhow, she's been watching that Rafi Tulfo talking about this American dude. I'm not condoning what he does, right? They got some ladies looking for him for like eight kids. I'm like, God damn, they got like 13 looking for me. <laughs> the difference is I ain't here running. The difference is I ain't running. I'm right here. They all know exactly where I am every day. They're subscribers on my channel. But for whatever reason, they choose not to allow me to be in those kids' lives. And uh, I'm the one on the offensive. I have no idea why, why they think like they do. But you have to understand something here. And it's, a, it's Southeast Asia. Most of the actors and actresses, they're what? They're Philam. They're half uh, Filipino. They're half uh, someplace else, right? That's all the actors and actresses. So a lot of these young ladies believe that if they have a Philam baby, when that baby gets to be 16, 17, they're gonna be big superstars down in Makati, and the mother's gonna be rich, a millionaire. Okay? That's their way of thinking. So, you know, the, the chicks that allegedly have children for me and they don't want them to, to know me, what's their motivation? What Really, what's their motivation? And it comes down to simplistic thinking, oh, this baby's full of M. When this baby gets old enough, he or she's gonna be an actor or actress down in Makati, and I'm gonna be rich and famous. Can't make this shit up. That's what they think. But if you go to look at the actors and the actresses, a lot of them are, are you know, what's the politically correct word? Uh, I don't even know what it is. Don't give a fuck. You know, here they call them Phil Ann, half Filipino, half American. And they think they're gonna be actors and actresses and make a million dollars. Anyhow, folks, I want to welcome you to my cooking channel today, my cooking show. I'm not going to edit hardly any, any of this video. I'm going to let the camera run. And I'm just going to cook dinner tonight. Maria's sleeping. Forced G's over here being a little moody because he needs a nap, but he didn't take a nap, so he's just very irritable. Um, wife number one, she's always irritable, especially when I'm arguing about <laughs> shit on Rafi Tolfo. My God. All right, what I'm working with here is a big old bowl of pork steak. And I hope the camera does that some justice right there. I'm gonna fire up the, I'm gonna fire up the grill here. The smoker, and I'm not smoking, I'm grilling. Firing up the Barrel Pro, listening to my Nashville video. Get down here and get my gloves. Get ready to do some dirty work here. Well, actually, you know what? The beautiful wife number two has already cleaned out my grill today. I certainly appreciate her doing that. All right, first item up for bid is the charcoal chimney. Um, 
on the charcoal here. I got one box left of the of the uh, bamboo charcoal, and I can't find the other. Oh, here it is. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. I got a few bags left of the. Uh, what was this? 90 pesos for 10 pieces? I can't remember exactly what it was. This is uh, the local charcoal right here. I buy it over near the Pompang Public Market. Y'all may have seen it on previous videos. Now, the only problem is like the small pieces in here, they'll fall through. Um, but you know what? There ain't no time like this present. Just dump it in there. If it falls through. Just let it fall through into the charcoal grill. That's a good thing about those uh, those bamboo briquettes. They're so big they don't fall through. They don't make a mess. All right, so set that there. And what I'm gonna do? Bring the chops over here. And I just cheat. I don't use paper anymore. All I do is set that charcoal chimney right down on that big burn and just get it rocking out. That's all I do. Ah, that's what I'm looking for right here. I have made fire. Look at it. Can you feel the love? All right, let me get this going. Folks, I did a video today. It's, it's uploading. Oh shit, I gotta cut the gas on first. Just a big shout out to all the Canadian truckers, the freedom fighters up there, everybody who's supporting the cause, the uh, revolution for humanity. The man, leave it to the Canadian truckers to kick off a worldwide revolution for humanity to save all of our freedoms and liberties that we've been deprived of for the past two years, which is still ongoing still ongoing certain countries i won't name no names will never well they'll be the last to let this shit go i'm not naming any names but you can pretty much guess what countries i'm talking about you know what i don't need to put that in there just drop this over in here folks we love this grill it's by barrel pro it's a smoker uh, but you know being a smoking takes so much time and effort we don't smoke every night, every day, obviously, but we damn sure barbecue just about every day. And I know a lot of people, they say, oh my God, you're feeding the babies too much, too much barbecue, too much charcoal food, it's charred, it's blah, blah, blah. Listen, folks, 10,000 years ago, that's, a, that's about when we stopped being uh, hunter gatherers and we became uh, sedentary people where we embraced agriculture right before that we went out and we slayed the food hunted it down throw it over the fire and barbecued it i'm a caveman oh shit baby <clears throat> did it did i get imperador in this microphone because if i did Check, check, check. The audio is shot. I don't know. Is there water in there? Do you see rum or whiskey in there? Oh, okay. All right, damn. Almost ruined a... Almost ruined a badass microphone. Anybody that's in, interested in photography today, I'm shooting on an old Sony FDR AX100. It's a 4K camcorder. 24 frames and 100 megabits per second. And I have a Hollyland Lark 150 wireless system, but this microphone did not come with the Hollyland. This is a, it's a more expensive mic. I've had it for years, but it works real good. Anyhow, so uh, that's, what, that's what we're shooting with today. Anybody interested in photography? I love the wireless microphone system because I can do what I'm doing. You can still hear me. You know, if you're not using a wireless mic, if you turn away from the camera, you guys can't hear me. I always have to be facing the camera. And if you're an instructor, you know, you should never turn your back on the audience, but hey, I'm not an instructor. I'm in the entertainment business. So sometimes I need to turn around and do things. And if you're just using a shotgun mic, they can't hear you. Hey, dude, don't get in my whiskey, man. 
Baby, I'll take another uh, rum and coke, please. I'll take a rum and uh, Sprite. Baby, I'm a beer drinker. I'm a beer drinker. I'm not too picky. All right, so we got this dragon over here firing up. I hope that's in frame. It don't take much, folks. Look at that. It don't take much. Just come over here. Let that dragon loose. Turn this dude off. Put this man over here in the dirt. Let him, oh shoot. Let him cool off. Turn off the gas for safety. You know, I've got a couple little pieces of charcoal. I just grab them with the tongs. Get over in there with your friends. All right, so once I get that going, what I've been doing is putting the heat over to the right side. We gotta open this up for, for the airflow. Hey, calamansi tree. You know, make sure it's opened up. Obviously, the airflow's going just like through the smoker. Thank you very much, Dawn. Folks, a beautiful wife number two just brought me an Imperador and Sprite. Why? Because I'm out of Coke. It's still delicious. Now she's looking a little haggard. She's looking a little haggard because she's got her hair up today. <laughs> Poor, you got him fired up. He's hungry. When he sees me cooking, he don't he don't want to wait. He's like, what the hell is that? Sounds like a damn BB hit me. Anyhow, before she sees me cooking, he doesn't like to wait. He's like, hurry up and cook, man. When he sees the operation going on over here, he knows what's going down. Plus, he's sleepy. All right, just use the, the Spider-Man backboard from the kids' uh, little basketball goal, wherever it's at. This is your temperature control when you're dealing with a bit of charcoal, charcoal grill. The more H2O you put to it, the hotter it's gonna get. So just put a little H2O on it. If you don't have a set of welding gloves for your barbecue slash smoker operation, severely limiting what you can do i got them gloves right there they have worked out to be some champions i don't even know what brand they are I mean, they're probably chinese specials but they work they work so good i'm probably gonna get me a better at some point give me like a long-term quality pair you see Thing get too hot. I just throw on that welding glove and then I can just grab it. I'm not worried about it. I ain't burning my sleeve, my shirt, my arm. That dude is ready. Anyhow, I'm sold on the welding gloves for the barbecue operation. I really am. All right, so that, that charcoal is pretty good. Let it heat up my system here. Let the air flow know where it's got to go. Look at that beautiful, beautiful blue smoke. I don't know if the camera's doing it any justice or not. Look at that. My goodness. So anyhow, folks, I want to propose a toast to all the Canadian truckers, all the freedom fighters in Canada that are leading the way in the worldwide fight against tyranny. Cheers to you, my friends. My goodness. I can't remember who. Oh, it was Jesse Ventura, right? Didn't he write a book called Don't Start the Revolution Without Me or something like that? There's a side of me. I mean, it's my younger side. I mean, by no means am I ready for the rocking chair. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what it is. As you get older, you uh, pick and choose what you engage in at certain times. Uh, but, you know certain side of me says damn it started the revolution without me i'm staying i'm over here but i'm over here for a good reason and i'm not leaving for a good reason and that reason's laying right in there taking a nap and that's my daughter so if i were in the states right now i would probably be in either ottawa or coots that's where i would be but circumstances have landed me right here in the good old Philippines. I'm representing everybody over here in Angeles City. Well, I'm representing all the freedom fighters here in Angeles City. 
just barbecuing and drinking beer. I know you guys are sitting in them trucks freezing. If you were over here, you'd be sweating because it was a hot one today with not a whole lot of wind. Um, it was hot, I ain't gonna lie to you. So I know you're over there freezing. I'm over here sweating. Mm. All right. All right, so what are we gonna cook tonight? What did I say we're gonna cook? Oh yeah, we're gonna put, cook some pork steaks. And I can't remember what the, uh, the side dish was gonna be. She told me, because we were out of vegetables, so I gotta make a run to the vegetable market. But she said something that actually was pretty good. Oh, now I remember. I had bought a beautiful head of lettuce over at the market, but we didn't have any salad dressing. So it's been sitting in there. Now it's still good, it's still good. But yesterday when I stopped by the Sorry Sorry store, I picked up some Thousand Island. I think it's what, Our Lady's Choice, Ladies of Choice, whatever the hell it is. I picked up some Thousand Island and she said, hey, we're gonna have a salad tonight. I said, wonderful. Pork steaks and salad with Thousand Island dressing, folks. Life is good. Life is so good, my goodness. Before I forget, let me give another big shout out to uh, one of our friends here on the channel, Rich Buong too. If you didn't see the previous, go back two videos. It'll say a video for Janice, what have you. Click on that link, go to Rich Buong 2's channel. Uh, basically what he did, he put a, put a music video together to a Alan Jackson song. My gosh, it's like a professional uh, video. I mean, if you didn't know it, you would think you were watching Alan Jackson's official video for that song. I mean, it's worthy of MTV. Um, maybe somebody should reach out to Alan Jackson and say, hey man, check this out. Maybe, maybe you want to pay the rights, you know, pay for the rights to this and use this as your official video because it's a hell of a lot better than your official video. So anyhow, shout out to Rich Buong too, man. Awesome. I, I saw some of the comments. People said it brought a tear to their eye. Uh, I'm one of them, man. I'm one of them. All day I've been trying to get a hold of Janice. She hadn't been on, uh, well, uh, I'm not on Facebook, right? So I, I'm not Facebook savvy. The old lady said she wasn't online. I'm like, how do you know? I, fuck, I don't know shit about Facebook. But I tried to call her the old fashioned way and it's a uh, you know, phone out of service. But that's pretty much 99% of Filipinas phones. If a Filipina gives you her number and you call her most of the time, you, she's not gonna answer the phone. Let's just get back to real life here. She's either in the village, there's no signal. She's in a, a fucking block building, there's no signal. She's got low battery. Uh, her sister's using the phone with her SIM card. Most of the time, nobody answers the phone. You send a text and then you wait. You sit back and wait um, until they get their shit together. Very frustrating communication. Like basic communication, which we're used to in the West, is very different here. Uh, you don't just pick up the phone and call somebody. They ain't gonna fucking answer nine times out of ten. It don't work like that, okay? Mm. Anyhow, I'm gonna keep trying to get a hold of her. I wanna check on her. Somebody left a comment, or I read a comment or something, said she's got a boyfriend now, whatever. I hope she does. I hope somebody's doing her right. Uh, at one point, somebody was doing her right. That, uh... Anyhow, that didn't work out, but maybe she's got a boyfriend now. If she does, I hope the gentleman's doing her right. I hope he does her right. Because um, I just want the best for her. That's all I want. But I just felt after that song, just, you know, a little bit emotional. Everybody got emotional about that song. And what Alan Jackson is singing about is, uh, you know, where's country music gone? And I'm with him, you know. The era that I grew up in, I think, was the last era. I'm so glad I grew up in the era that I did. Going to country concerts, all these great country artists coming out, line dancing throughout the 90s, country clubs in the 90s were on fire. I mean, I remember when Alan Jackson was nobody. 
I can't remember the first time I saw him, to be honest. I can't remember if it was at the buckboard. Was it the buckboard in Marietta or Miss Kitty's? Marietta, Georgia. I mean, he's from Noonan, Georgia, south of Atlanta. But I saw that dude when he was just, you know, getting just getting started. But I can't remember where the hell I saw him. I have to call my old man and ask him. All right, got them pork steaks on there. Just close that bad boy up. Let that barrel pro go to work. Anyhow, I'm a big Alan Jackson fan. Always have been. I've seen him in concert. I say a couple dozen times, probably more than that. Um, you know, because I was in that scene. I was big into the country music scene. I tell you what, if I could go to con country concerts here in the Philippines every weekend. And three times a week, I could get some General Cho's chicken, two egg rolls, crab rangoon, some extra sweet and sour sauce, and I don't know, maybe some mugu. What was it mugu guy pan? Anyhow, if I could get some Americanized Chinese food here like three times a week, I mean, I'm talking quality that you would get in America, right? Not real Chinese food. I want the Americanized version, damn it. Send me some General Cho's, about 18 cases of Miller Lite, and some country concerts. I'd never leave the Philippines. Mm. Unfortunately, that dream is not steeped in reality. You know what's crazy though? You know, just north of Manila. If you've been here, obviously you've seen it. If you haven't, you haven't. But the Philippine Arena, they say, is the biggest arena in the world. I don't know if that's true or not. But there's a big fucking huge arena. It's huge. There's like two two arenas right there. Man, if you could get all these country music stars just to come in and start coming in there every week, you could have like a, a, a just a repeat of the 90s here. I really think you would. Because um, I really think Filipinos would embrace line dancing like I embraced it back in the 90s. Now, I could be totally wrong about that. But I think that's what would happen. You know, damn, country western stores would pop up everywhere. You'd have everybody around here wearing a cowboy hat and boots, even though they're drugstore cowboys, probably never seen a damn horse. That don't matter, because back in the 90s when I walked in a club, it was me and a handful of other people that ever saw a damn horse. <laughs> everybody else in there is what they used to call a drugstore cowboy, right? The dude lived in an apartment, uh, worked in an office somewhere, but on Wednesday nights, ladies night at Cowboys or the Crystal Chandelier, that dude saddled up, hat, pair of Wranglers, just like I'm wearing right now. You know, put his belt buckle on, got his boots on, and he rolled out and danced all night. Next morning, put his suit, you know, his coat and tie back on, went back to his cubicle. Called them drugstore cowboys, right? And, you know, like I said, there's only a few of us that ever that were real cowboys up in there. Get away. Anyhow, I don't even know how I got on that subject. All right, so two bags of charcoal. It looks like my temperature is a little bit down. I might add a few more, maybe one more bag of charcoal. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. If that temp don't come up, I'm not messing around. But usually two bags will do it. Two bags will do it. Folks, let me, uh, let me check the gain over here. I think it might be getting a little dark. All right. I think it's on the gain. Let's see. I ain't got my reading glasses on. But here's what you do. When you're manually driving a camera, and I'm not Steven Spielberg, but see, you bump it up. There's 12 on the gain. What's that? That's 15? Is that too much light? It's, see, the gain is like fake light, right? I'm not adding any light. I'm just adding fake light from the camera. But the more you add, what happens is it starts pixelating, not pixelating, it gets grainy. There you go, it gets grainy. So I just bumped you up to 15 on the game. Now maybe you can see me better. And you know what, a better idea, there's a revolutionary tool for videography that just came out and I wanna introduce you to it. It's called fucking light. Turn on the fucking light, you dummy. Did I mention I ain't no damn Steven Spielberg? Now I might be able to take that game down 12. There we go. 
Oh yeah. This thing is smoking it up, smoking it up, smoking it up. Look at that beautiful blue smoke. My goodness, but again, the temp is still down. I might have to do something about this. You know what I'm tempted to do? What would happen if I throw a piece of wood on there? Now this wood is for smoking, but you know what? All it's gonna do is make the pork chops a little more delicious and it's gonna take my temperature on up. That's exactly what this dog is doing. Boom, potness. Look at that. I'll go ahead and flip them while I'm in here. But that piece of wood right there is fit to take it on up to the next level. What's cooking? You put the meat on the heat, add some vegetables and spice, and see what happens. That's all cooking is. Gordon motherfucking Ramsey ain't gonna tell you that because he wants you to think that cooking is complicated. Don't try it because he's an expert, and if you try it, he's gonna come in and yell at you and bitch at you because you didn't do it exactly how that jackass did. You know, fuck Gordon Ramsay, man. My grandmother is about a hundred times better cooked than you ever thought about, dude. Look at that. Look at that. I told you. Fired up that piece of wood. Gonna smoke it up. Gordon Ramsay don't know shit about taking a Spider-Man backboard and getting the party started. Baby, this pork just turned into hickory smoke pork look at that smoke come here take a take a take a big drag off of it come here put your lips on there right here put your lips right here baby honey i have observed that you look a little bit haggard today did you not understand i'm making an award-winning youtube video here people want to see you baby because you're beautiful you got beautiful clothes and shorts on today Honey, but you you don't, you just let your hair down. That's all you gotta do. Folks, these Filipinas, when they put their hair down, they're absolutely beautiful. But most of them, oh my God, it's hot. They put their hair up in some form or fashion, then they look like their mother. You know, you resemble your mother. Put your hair down, baby. And then you look like my girlfriend. Thank you for uh, assisting with the with the gloves. Yeah, that's uh, good welding gloves. I don't know why, but Fatima does not like my new girlfriend. Let's talk girlfriend, honest here. Girlfriend, girlfriend, get you and kick her ass. Okay, but I don't understand why you want to kick her ass. Why you don't like the girl? She says she looks like a bulldog. Why do you think she looks like a bulldog? She's baby? not your girlfriend. Okay, well, that's right, because I made a deal with her. She didn't like the girl. I said, look, I'll get rid of her. I'll find a new one. But for some reason, she calls her the bulldog. Why, baby? I don't think she looks like a bulldog. Huh? A lot of people love bulldogs. Look at that smoke, folks. Smoking them out. The good thing when you throw a piece of wood in there, if you're here in the tropics, she, she's a bulldog. What? That's why you like her. Honey, I'm trying to talk about the smoke here. Listen, okay. folks, we do have a few mosquitoes at our place here because we're just surrounded by vegetation, right? People ask me about mosquitoes and flies. We have a few flies and a few mosquitoes, but we're surrounded by vegetation. We have a bunch of rabbits over there. We're always cooking. Hey, in the tropics, it's gonna attract. Okay, let's be honest. Poop attracts flies and vegetation and moisture attracts uh, mosquitoes and also dark colors. I'm an expert on mosquitoes and flies. Lived in Southeast Asia uh, 10 years now. I know everything there is to know. Just like shrimp, shrimp and shrimp sandwich, shrimp gumbo, shrimp stew and all that. I know uh, I everything know, I there know is to know. Okay, the flies come from the rabbits over there. Uh, no problem. And the mosquitoes obviously come from standing water, the vegetation, and everything else, right? But if you throw a, a piece of wood on there and you start smoking this up, it runs all them bugs out of here. They can't stand that much smoke. With just the regular charcoal, it's not going to do it. But you throw one of them piece of, pieces of wood. Oh, my God, I lost a piece of fat down in below, baby. She's going to be pissed because I lost that fat. If it was meat, she don't care, but she, she loves that fat. Just like I love a fat booty. Baby, I love a fat booty on the Filipino. 
Mm. Oh shit, smoke me out. But anyhow, if you if you throw some wood chips or whatever and you you just put a little smoke on there, you're not gonna have no mosquitoes here. You're not gonna have no mosquitoes here. Get that Spider-Man on it. One more time. Look at that. That's all you gotta do. Oh loud! Touch the wood, not the metal. Baby, something just fell off my grill. What happened? Damn, damn. That's what? Oh, that was my pipe? Oh, baby, go check it. Make sure, make sure that thing didn't break. All right, she's saying that my pipe fell. It's damn sure dead. <clears throat> my shisha pipe right here. Damn. It's a damn good thing the thing didn't break. Look at that. The folks I have observed, I need to kick up the game. Next time I'm. All right, I'm now we're getting a little bit grainy, but hey, at least you can see. Look at that. Huh. Next time that I'm angry, I throw that in the trash can. Baby, if you get angry and throw my pipe in the trash can, I'd have to call the brown guy on you. You'll be down at the dump trying to get that back. Are you being. You'd be in a trash man's house trying to buy it back from him, really. Okay. I put it in the trash. This thing would not go to the trash dump. This would go to the trash man's house. I break that. Why Filipinos always want to get angry at the foreign guys and break things? That's a good question. You, you want me to break your face or that one? Folks, you see the violence, the threat of violence that I'm under here. I'm facing a lot of stress here. When I say I'm under stress, I'm under stress, duress, oppression, sometimes depression. Baby, why you don't like the bulldog? Anyhow, propose another toast to all the Canadian truckers, all the freedom fighters up there, freezing your ass off in Ottawa, if you're there at Coots listening to my voice, my friends, I've been there. I know exactly where you are. I've been to Sweet Grass. I've been to Coots. I know exactly where you are. Hold the line, my friends, because you're on the winning team. That's all I got to say. People around the world support you. You're leading the way. Mm. Home with you tonight. Folks, look who's making a cameo appearance. The beautiful wife, number two, with uh, the haggard hairdo today. I've been encouraging her, requesting that she put her hair down for your viewing pleasure, but she don't understand what's going on here, okay? You Baby. don't understand what? Honey, when we go to Hollywood, it's Hollywood about how I'm you look, not how you feel, I'm baby. Hollywood keeps calling us, baby. I'm not going for a couple. Honey, it's not about how you feel. It's about how you look. Hey. Think I'll just stay here and drink. So, honey, what'd you think about uh, the video from Rich Buong 2 today with Janice? Good video, huh? Do you miss Janice? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, Rich Buong 2. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's who made it. Great video, right? But do you miss Janice? Yeah. I miss her too, baby. Shout out to Janice. We miss you, Dawn. We miss you wherever you're at over in Barrio, Barreto, Subic, Castalejos, wherever you're at over there. We miss you. Anytime you want to come over here and eat my delicious pork steaks with a little bit of smoke flavor, just, just let me know, baby. I'm going to send John Paul JP come pick you up. John Paul will scoop you up like a scoop of ice cream. Anytime you want. Honey, listen, I'm a physics expert, but I can't manipulate physics. I can't make the fire uh, permeate these pork steaks any faster than the fire is going to permeate the pork steaks due to the laws of physics. Okay? You ever heard anything about physics? Huh? 
Baby, I'm trying to make an award award-winning YouTube travel show video here. And all you want to do is watch a Western. Yeah, I'm only cooking, but if I put on the Western, maybe YouTube take all my money. Copyright, baby. Yeah, honey, listen. I need to listen to my music. Look at that fire coming through there. Look at that. I have made fire. Again, man, shout out to all them truckers up there, man. I, listen, I feel your pain. I've been in the cold, too. Not like, not like you all the time, but I've experienced the pain of the cold. You're up there freezing your ass off, fighting for freedom. I'm right here barbecuing, sweating my ass off. But I'm recognizing. I'm recognizing who I need to thank. And I'm thanking y'all. And baby, can you make me another drink? Because I want to propose another toast to my Canadian I, trucker I, I friends in Ottawa and Coots and all around Canada and around the world. Huh? Hey, sweetie. You come see Papa? Where's the what, baby? The troubadour. I'm just an old troubadour. Well, I, you said, where's the troubadour? I'm thinking George Street. Open air, that's it, that's the... What's the name of it? Visaya Abridor. Yeah. The troubadour? <laughs> Baby, the troubadour right here is hiding out behind the, the bowl, the dog bowl. <laughs> that's what I thought she said. I thought she said, where's the troubadour? What'd you call it? The open door? Abridor. Ugly door? Abridor. Abridor, the abridor. Get this one. Here you go, sweetie girl. There you go, get some mom, mom. Cause I'm just no troubadour. All right, folks, got my Maria out here now. She took a little nap. Got wife number two on the scene. You, you keep sitting wife number two. Honey, one day I might promote you back. <laughs> but you gotta work very hard at it, baby. Can you tell us what subadroy means? Go ahead, what's up, Subadroy? Quiet in there. Oh, Subadroy. Folks, y'all see the stress I'm under? You see the stress I'm under here? It's not all fun and games, living in the Philippines, living in the tropics, hanging out with beautiful ladies every day, drinking all day, uh, making award-winning videos and films and movies. It's not all fun and games. Like Charlie Sheen said, I'm winning. I'm winning! I'm gonna propose another toast. Well, I can't say it from my daughter. I'm, I'm gonna wait, because I was gonna propose a toast to Justin Trudeau. And in, in the sense of positivity, Justin Trudeau could be the hero of the century if he just stood up right now and said, you know what, my fellow Canadians, you're right. Give me a pen. <laughs> end of the pandemic in Canada. This guy would be a national hero. Statues would be erected all over Canada in his honor. But he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it because he's the biggest That's why he ain't going to do it. He don't got a set of balls to uh, pull something off like that. But if he just said, that's it. You know what? You're right. I agree with my fellow Canadians. This shit is over right now. Not tomorrow at midnight. Right now. Once this ink dries on this executive decision, everybody's freedoms restored, Canada would lead the way on the planet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you always think of like the US and Russia, and now China, the US, Russia, China. If that dude stood up and signed that and said, we're done with this shit, right now, effective immediately, Canada would be like the new world power. Everybody would be trying to get a visa to move there. Mm. If I demise addicted to westerns, I'm listening to country music, but she's waiting to watch a western tonight, folks. And I'm cool with it. I grew up watching westerns with my grandfather every night. You know, after a hard day's work, whether we were working in the shop, woodworking, uh, working in the fields, whatever. In the summertime, you know, in the garden, truck, we call it a truck patch. We were working in the truck patch, what have you. At night, 
at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, somewhere in there. Kick on the air conditioning. Be sitting in the living room, kick on the air conditioning. Everybody have a damn bushel. Big old bowl of peas, either black eyed peas, butter beans, whatever you were shelling. And we would sit there and watch westerns, enjoying two hours of air conditioning while we were still working. And we didn't even know we were working. We're sitting there shelling peas. After the news, air con off, lights off, lights out, go to bed, get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning and start the day over. That's the farm life. But it was so funny because after you had picked purple hole peas, uh, you know, butter beans, whatever you would pick that day, you came in, got some dinner, and then got underneath that air con, you were still working, but you didn't know it because you were surrounded by family, watching John Wayne on the box, and you're sitting there, and before you know it, you done show the mess of black-eyed peas, and it's time to go to bed. So it's like you never stopped working. And you know what? Those are the best days of my life. What was that, Brian Adams or... Bruce Springsteen. Anyhow, <laughs> life was so much simpler back in the 70s, early 80s. No, let me just say the 70s. I think 1980 was when shit changed. It's like 79 was the greatest year, and then 1980, shit went downhill. Maybe that's just because I was a child, and I was growing up around my grandparents and going to church. Life was simple for me. Hard work, work from sun up to sundown, uh, limited TV, go to church She's Sunday morning, enough. Sunday night, Wednesday night, I vacation Bible school, uh, tent revivals. Other than that, your ass was uh, working. But on Sunday, it wasn't no damn work. All we did on Sunday was feed the chickens. That's the only work my grandfather did on Sunday was feed the chickens. That was it. He was a good man and I miss him. He's a real good man. Now folks, I just jacked that gain up, something terrible. So is it gonna be grainy? Of course it is. This old Sony is a great camera. It will record all day, all night till the cows come home. It will never overheat, never. There's no way. But it's not a full frame sensor. Um, it's good, but it's not great like a, like a full frame sensor for low light. So I have to jack up the gain, which makes it grainy. Honey, what'd you do over here to my food? Did you turn it? Okay, well don't be over here messing up my algebraic equation and my math on when I got to turn this stuff. Folks, look at that smoke. My goodness. Ain't no mosquitoes around here. There ain't no flies. Take my man. Damn, there's so much smoke in there, I can't even see. I gotta rearrange the dudes here. Play a little musical chairs with these gentlemen. These gentlemen here. Pull this big long dude in here. Call this guy Long Dong Silver. Call him Long Duck Dong. What movie was that from? <laughs> All right, get this guy in here, pull him back up. Put this little, this little slender dude. It's like stew on a rope. I don't even know why he's still hanging in there. Matter of fact, I put him on top. Shit, that dude right there. I don't know where he came from. Came out of left field, but he's not a pork steak. Honey, that big long string of meat, that's not a pork steak. What is that? You don't know, but you put it in there? Yeah, that one that's not, it don't look like a pork steak, baby. It looks like a damn, uh, like a kebab, but no stick. You don't know? Folks, we're coming up with a great song here. If you haven't checked out my Nashville video, the link is down in the description. Boom, potness. Shout out to Peter B and the band. That dude right there is a superstar, but he didn't know it. He's up there playing Tootsies in a fucking t-shirt uh, he has no idea his potential this guy is is like he even favors hank williams he looks like a young hank williams the guy sings uh, he's wonderful 
but you're standing on Tootsie, man. You ain't got no fucking cowboy hat on. You're wearing a, a short sleeve t-shirt. Bro, you got to dress for the job you're trying to get. Don't dress for the job that you got. What movie did that come from? But that was great advice. You know who that come from? Who'd that come from? I'm gonna say it again. Little brother, you got to dress for the job you're trying to get. Don't dress for the job that you got. <laughs> Chris Rock, <laughs> Bernie Mac. Not a bad movie. What we talking about, ladies? Huh? Are you, I know Belio. That means Papa's crazy, huh? Sweetie, you did a great job at the dentist today, honey. Dr. Nikki said you did a great job. Folks, I took my girl to the dentist today. She did a great job with Dr. Nikki. If you need any dental work, I highly recommend Dr. Nikki up there. It's in Horizon uh, Tower One. I forget, what is it? British Smile, whatever it is. Horizon Tower One, up there going towards friendship. Dr. Nikki does a great job with her. Um, she did a great job on my cleaning. And, and you know what? Let me shout out to Dr. Nikki. I've never been able to get a cleaning unless I was numbed up. My teeth are so sensitive. Dr. Nikki cleaned my teeth and I did not have to get, you know, the uh, lidocaine in my gums. So, great job. She did uh, flow flows, cavities, pulling teeth, whatever she did. She fixed Flo's mouth before she went back to the village. And I'm so proud of that. I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of that, folks, because one of the things that folks here in the Philippines don't spend money on, and that's dental care. It is so lacking. There's no dental insurance. And most of the time, their, their teeth are so jacked up, they just go in there and they pull three of their fucking permanent teeth. And that's how they treat it, right? I've been to so many dentist offices here that don't even have an x-ray machine. They're just like, hey, which one hurts? That one, boom, they pull it out. And I'm like, holy shit, did they just pull that thing out with no you know, lidocaine, what, what the hell's going on? Uh, it's a challenge here. So one of the things that I've done since I've been in this country is send people to the dentist. I've sent a lot of people to the dentist because it's not something that they would spend money on, their parents would spend money on, and it affects them every day of their daily lives. That's why I send people to the dentist. What? It's so smoking here now. Baby. Are there any mosquitoes biting you? No. Don't be complaining, baby. Dengue fever is rampant here in the Philippines. And we're not getting dengue fever because I'm smoking these chops, baby. Anyhow, if you want to know the best gifts you can give a person in this country, I mean, it's the way it is. The best gift that you can give a person in the Philippines is take them to the dentist. But if you elect to do that, you have to be committed. You can't take them like one time because they obviously are gonna need multiple visits. So when you take a person to the dentist here, you have to commit to getting them to neutral buoyancy. In other words, all their problems are fixed. And now if they floss and brush, they won't have problems anymore. Don't be cheap about it. Don't just take them and get two cavities filled. That's not solving their problems. What you wanna do, is commit to one person to take them to the dentist until the dentist says, okay, we'll see you in six months for a cleaning. That sounds easy, but you know what? You're gonna get multiple, 10 cavities, four teeth pull, this, that, uh, take antibiotics for two weeks before I can pull the teeth. Hey, you want sanitized travel shit? Go to Condé Nast Magazine, top 10 places to retire. Number one, Chiang Mai. Number two, Boracay. How many times you keep saying that? In your head, zombie, zombie, zombie. Hey, hey. Click the link to this video. It's my Nashville video. Maybe I should have came up with a better title. I screwed up the title. I just wanted it to be simple for me to remember Nashville, Tennessee because that night hanging out with my father in Tootsie's Lounge in Nashville, Tennessee, listening to that Peter B guy and the band right there with this girl singing, 
was a wonderful night and I don't want it to get complicated. In hindsight, I should have been a little bit more descriptive, like best band in Nashville, best band on Broadway, or whatever I come up with, right? Um, but I just entitled it Nashville, Tennessee. Some of these videos, selfishly, they're just for me. I share them with you because I love you, but you know, a lot of the videos are just for me. And this was one of those videos, just hanging out with my dad, partying like we did throughout the 90s, half of the 2000s, and listening to great country music in Nashville, Tennessee. Zombie. What's in your head? In your head. Cranberry sang this song. The, the lady who sang this song, may you rest in peace, Dawn. Just do the research about this song, Zombie by the Cranberries. It's uh, if, if you don't know the research, the research and the backstory behind it and everything will, will blow your mind. It's absolutely awesome. Ah. All right, I'll give you a tidbit. It has to do with Northern Ireland and bombing and a child that died. Do the research. Zombie is not just a song, it's a statement. In your head, zombie, zombie. Honey, can I ask you a question? Have you had one mosquito bite you tonight? No, you haven't. Why? Because the foreign guy is a damn genius. Shit, man, a little, little brown, put him over here. Get over here, my white skinned white girl. Oh shit, is that racist? Is that racist to call a piece of pork chop a white skinned white girl? I don't know, folks. I have no idea what, what I can say, what I can't say. Some pirate looking at 50, still living in the fucking 70s and the 80s. Shoulder, world to see. Now listen, that piece of wood is smoking up this whole area. So we're doing a little coughing, but we ain't getting bit by no mosquitoes with the dengue fever. Pick your poison. You want to die or you just want to smell a little wood smoke? I mean, that thing is like permeating the whole area. All right, folks, I'm going I'm to type in. I want to see how we're doing in the search results uh, for Rich Buong's video. So I'm going to do Alan Jackson, where have you gone? Holy crap. Okay, Alan Jackson, where have you gone? Official video, 1.3 million views four months ago. Uh, official lyric video 10 months ago. Number three on my search results, Rich Buong 2. Where have you gone? Man, shout out to Ruben. Shout out to Ruben and Captain Fred. My goodness, I gotta get over there and get another trip going with Captain Ruben, or Captain Fred and first mate Ruben. My goodness, what great times. Shout out to Eric and Mercy. I miss y'all. I know you're in Mexico. I wish I was in Mexico with you. I wish I could teleport my whole crew to Mexico. But that's that's not steeped in reality. I'm glad you guys are over there having a good time. I'm glad Mercy got to see her family, which is most important. She got to see her family in the States and her family down in Mexico. Um, you know, I know I know you got to see your son, my friend. I, I miss you, buddy. Everybody over here misses you. Uh, Warner, uh, Roger, Dina, Cowboy, we all miss you, man. Everybody misses you all over here. But if I had my choice, I would come to Mexico instead of y'all coming here, man, to be with you. And we miss Mercy, all the ladies miss Mercy. But, 
I know you complain about eating tacos every day, but bro, on your videos, I mean, you looking slim and trim. Them tacos are doing, them tacos are doing a body good, man. You're losing weight and I'm gaining weight. Yes, sweetie girl. Dada Ate. Yes, that's your daddy. That's your daddy. Folks, she always calls herself Ate because she's Forrest G's Ate, right? So she like refers to herself a lot of times in the third person as Ate. And she is an Ate, you know, she's an Ate to Forrest G. So that's how she refers to herself a lot of times. Who's that, sweetie? Ate Janice? Oh, so sweet, Maria. Man, Rich Buong too. You just cranked it out with this video, my friend. Yes, that's Ate's daddy. Who's your mama? Who's mama? Who's your mama, sweetie? No, who's your mama? Mama Beth. Who's Ate's mom? Mama Beth. She knows she, her mom was Mama Beth and her father is, is Papa. Papa Marcos. Man, the scenery that we were at over there is just absolutely stunning. Camping out on that island. My gosh. I'm trying to figure out why I'm not there right now. Why am I not there right now? Basically what it's saying is uh, we need to plan a trip. You know, Janice was so sweet to Forrest G. She, she really was. She's just a really good mother to Forrest G. Not trying to take Fatima's place, but Janice just always loved little Forrest G. Now, folks, if you don't know, we knew Janice for a year before she come with us. You know, she worked there at the store, at the penthouse suite. So we knew her as a friend for a year before I even said, hey, come with me, girl. I always have my eye on her, to be honest. She's a beautiful girl. When I went to the U.S., she was staying with Fatima every night, helping out with Forrest G. She had her own room downstairs, but she would stay with Forrest, Forrest G and Fatima every night. When Faye would leave, I felt comfort in that. I felt really comfortable being in America because I knew Janice was there with Fatima and Forrest G. The only thing I worried about was my Maria. But we knew her for one year before she came with us. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. My long-term subscribers, you guys know that, but if you're new, you didn't understand that. She was our friend for a year uh, before she came with us. Baby, you're looking so pretty tonight when you come out here with that large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. Folks, that piece of gear right there is made in America by the good folks down in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my friends. Shout out to all them folks working over there in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, making them large cast iron products, working the grind every day. Thank you very much, because I'm using that product every night. Every night I'm cooking on that large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. My goodness, what a great product. Let's skip this ad. I'm in the YouTube business and I don't even subscribe to that YouTube premium. Um, I got to though. I don't know why I don't I don't know why I don't subscribe to that. It's like 12 bucks a month. I don't know. Is that like hypocritical to pay the money to not see the ads when you make money off the ads? I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that one is. Sweet country music. Play another Alan Jackson song, then we'll go to Dan Seals. You know what? Now let's go to Dan Seals. If you don't like Dan Seals, you don't. Maybe you don't go back far enough, folks. I think of Dan Seals. I think of Montana. Sing it, baby. Out in Phoenix. 
Honey, why did you take over my grill? I was letting it. burn now. That ain't burn. That's it. That is not burn. I got 36,000 witnesses here that will attest to the fact that is not burn. Hold it up there so they can see it, baby. And mama home. Honey, listen. Listen, not only did you not get bit by mosquitoes, that's going to be the best delicious pork steak you've ever had in a long time, baby. Honey, is this my salad? Oh, Lord, folks. Sometimes I think about you. We used to ride out. In your rhinestones and your sequins With the sunlight on your hair Folks, life is good. I'm chilling with my daughter here. I I'm so blessed to have Boy. her here. Yeah, close it up. Now, hold on, wait, wait a minute. Let me show folks, listen. What we do, and this is what works best for the lodge, for the cast iron. You barbecue, before you sit down to eat, just wash out the lodge with a little bit of water. Put it inside the barbecue grill. And you might not be able to see that. I don't know if I got the game jacked up high enough. But we got the, the lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker in the lid. And you just drop the lid. Now it's clean, but it's wet. You just drop the hammer on that bad boy. And tomorrow, when you go to retrieve that large 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker that's made in America by the good folks down in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, my friends, it's like new. Cause it's like baked all the moisture out. If you leave it in there for four days, it's not gonna rust and you're not spending any extra electricity. Do your cooking, wash it out with a little water, get it clean, throw it in that barbecue grill let that go to work right there. Tomorrow, it's even gonna be extra smoky. Everything that glitters is not gold. Folks, this video is dedicated to all, all the Canadian truckers up there. If you're a trucker from Canada, you are the world's heroes right now. Leading the way in the revolution for humanity I raise my glass to you, my friends. I wish I could be there. I wish, I really do. Thanks to you going in harm's way, it's gonna benefit everybody around the world, my children. And for that, I must say thank you. No matter who you are, you can't be involved in every fight. You can't be in every battle. You can't be in every war. And this is one war that I can't be involved in due to my circumstances right now. I have to pass the torch, let y'all handle it. But don't think that I ain't appreciative. I raise my glass to you. Hold the line, my friends. Stay in that cold ass truck as long as you can and hold the line. Hold the line. That goddamn GoFundMe thing went to 10 million before they started jacking with you. What's that mean? <laughs> that means society is with you and they're behind you. We are behind you. Hold the line. How many times did Dr. Martin Luther King go to jail before he was on the winning team? I'm gonna go ahead and conclude this video. But basically, this is a virtual dinner it's a virtual dinner for all my trucker friends freezing your ass off up there in Ottawa over in Coots. I made you two pork chops. The old lady made you a, a beautiful salad with carrots, tomatoes, uh, onions, Thousand Island. So th this is for y'all. This, this is a virtual dinner because I'm on the other side of the globe. I'm going to go eat with my family, my friends. Everybody freezing your ass off up in Ottawa and Coos, hold the line. Hold the line. History's being written, and it's being written that you are the heroes.